CNN. Donald Trump flip-flopping on abortion this week. The former president going back and forth on how he'd vote on a Florida ballot amendment that could overturn the state's ban on abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. Well, I think the six week is too short. Uh, it has to be more time, and so that's, and I've told them that I want more weeks. So you'll vote in favor of the amendment? I'm, I'm voting that, I am gonna be voting that we need more than six weeks. Are you voting yes or no on Amendment 4 in Florida? So I think six weeks, you need more time than six weeks. I've disagreed with that right from the early primaries. When I heard about it, I disagreed with it. And of course, the Harris campaign trying to seize the moment, announcing a new bus tour across several key battleground states. The campaign saying that tour is aimed at advocating for women's reproductive rights and highlighting that issue heading into November. Priscilla Alvarez is joining us now. And Priscilla, what more can you tell us about the bus tour and, and also what they're trying to accomplish here? Well, this has been a strategy from the beginning. They know reproductive rights is among the top issues for voters, and they think that it's an issue that they can bank on, and given their position on this, and the vice president, very familiar with it. She was the voice on this issue uh, for the then Biden campaign, kicking off her own reproductive rights tour earlier this year, and one of those stops calling uh, these abortion restrictions the Trump abortion bans, and that has stuck ever since. And something we'll probably be hearing a lot more about over the next few weeks. On Tuesday, uh, the campaign will be kicking off their reproductive rights tour. Now, this is going to be mostly surrogates. It kicks off on Tuesday, again, in Florida, that state where abortion is on the ballot. It will continue on from there, at least 50 stops. And it will include uh, surrogates as well as uh, other elected officials and the campaign says celebrities. Now, again, we're still waiting for a lot more details on what's possible. What it does tell us is that they do think it's an issue, a galvanizing one for voters. Democrats uh, believe it's one that could help them make more inroads of with female voters. Polls already showing that the vice president has an edge uh, against former President Donald Trump there. And so this is uh, something that they're going to be leaning on a lot over the next few weeks. This tour, the latest indication of that, and certainly uh, at rallies, it has been an issue that has been featured prominently. So this flip-flopping, uh, the vice president already seizing on it, releasing a statement yesterday saying that Donald Trump just made his position on abortion very clear, then going on to say the choice in this election is clear. So again, Jessica, just one of those issues that the campaign thinks they have uh, an edge on when it comes to uh, go going up against former President Donald Trump. All right, Priscilla Alvarez for us with the latest reporting in Washington. Thank you so much for that. Joining us now, CNN senior political commentator Ana Navarro and Republican strategist Katie Frost. Good to have both of you here with us. Uh, Anna, let's start first with you uh, and the Harris campaign really zeroing in on this issue of reproductive rights with the bus tour really trying to highlight that. What does that do for some of these independent voters or people who maybe weren't going to vote or weren't motivated to vote in battleground states? Is that is that a good move for them? I think it is. I think it is because look, we have got to continue highlighting for political purposes and for humanitarian purposes. The horror, the, the cruelty that is being inflicted on women who have reproductive emergencies and can't get treatment in their states, sometimes have to flee their states, uh, travel thousands, you know, hundreds if not a thousand miles to get treatment and what that has meant. I too am a Florida voter like Donald Trump. I was one way before him. I'm going to vote yes because I am tired of hearing about the women who had to carry babies to term only to hold them in their arms as they gasp for breath and die minutes later. That is cruel. That is cruel. And I think women, particularly women, keep hearing these stories and realize that their daughters, their granddaughters, their nieces, their friends themselves are at risk and that this cannot continue happening in America. Mm. And Katie, Trump really kind of playing both sides this week. It that turn upset a lot of people, a lot of his supporters in the pro-life crowd. I think we have a clip of Eric Erickson, and this was his response. Let's play that. I have never, and I will never vote for a candidate who supports abortion rights. Donald Trump came very close to sounding like he does yesterday. And if he loses in 
November, yesterday, August 29th, in the year of our Lord, 2024, will be the day he lost if he doesn't do some damage control pretty quickly. Uh, Katie, those are, that's a big statement. Do you agree with that assessment? Is the former president at risk of losing some of his core voters, or do you think he was able to clean this up? Well, it's good to be with you. You know, Eric is uh, from my home state of Georgia and a good friend. And I'll tell you that the consensus among the pro-life movement in D.C. we've seen emerge is 15 weeks. By 15 weeks, you know, 94% of abortions are performed before 15 weeks, and 73% of Americans agree with that policy. You know, the full clip that we wasn't played there of President Trump is when he was asked how was he going to vote specifically on this amendment, he mentioned how radical it is. And I'll tell you, the policies that are being pushed by the Harris campaign, the Democratic Party, their position on abortion is far out of step with the mainstream. Only 10% of Americans agree with the idea that abortion should be available up to the ninth month. And so, you know, they may think in the Democratic Party that this is a winning issue for them because they're getting beat on every other issue. If this is a campaign about the economy, about inflation, about immigration, about foreign policy, Vice President Harris is going to lose. The only potential path here for her is she needs to make it about abortion. But when the actual position of the Democratic Party on abortion becomes apparent to the voters, they are going to reject it because it is far outside of the mainstream. Um, and Katie, he, he does Listen, talk... only, let me, let me, I respond Go ahead, to that. Only, uh, only 1% of abortions happen after the 21st week. This idea that Donald Trump said that there's executions going on in some states, it's, it's patently false. And believe it or not, I also am a friend of Eric Erickson, and he is a very consistent, principled, conservative voter. But I would say to my friend Eric, you've already voted. If you voted for Trump, you've already voted for a pro-choice candidate. Because it wasn't too many years ago that in public, Donald Trump was calling himself very pro-choice. Then he said he was pro-life. Then he said he wanted that there should be some form of punishment for women. And then he appointed the three judges and has taken credit, has bragged about it, has expressed pride of that decision, and then tried to back away with it, from it. Well, he can't. He is pregnant with dogs, you know, uh, and he is pregnant with all of the cruel consequences that have happened as a result of dogs. Go ahead, Katie. But you know what, Anna, when you look at the different laws in these different states, you know, you were talking earlier about humanitarian. I want to ask you, what kind mm -hmm. of a position is it when in this Minnesota, Governor Wall's home state, he signed into law legislation that removed the words medical care from the requirements in the Abortion Survivors Act? Now, in the state of Minnesota, you are not required to provide medical care for a child that's born alive after a failed abortion. I'm sorry, it's letting a child sit on the table and not receive medical care. I don't consider that humanitarian. I don't know what world we would consider that humanitarian. So when you went, these are radical policies far outside the mainstream. You remember Governor Norum up in Virginia saying that if a child survives an abortion, the baby would be, quote, set aside while the doctor and the mother have a conversation. The only conversation we're having when there is a beating child sitting there a heartbeat on the table is how do we save this life? That's the only conversation we need to be having. Listen, Morning. those Go are ahead. a handful of cases. And, uh, and I do think that it is up to the mother and the doctor and that a live child would be given care. But I would ask you, how humanitarian is it not to include rape and incest in those laws? like is happening in states like Texas. How humanitarian is it to make women have to leave their states, pay for care, figure out who their doctor is going to be in another state, because it, it takes them almost dying of sepsis in places like Texas in order to get care. Do you think that's humanitarian? Do you think that's a Christian value? Do you think that's a family value? When often these women are not going to be able to have more babies because their reproductive system is destroyed? after having to go through such trauma? I mean, come on, come on. Uh, we're out of time. Katie, I'll give you a quick last word, but then, then unfortunately we've got to go. No, I would just say that we have to value every single life, both the life of the mother 
and the life of the child that she is carrying. And I believe the Republican Party is the party of life. We want to give women protection. We want to make sure that they have the best possible future ahead. And the idea that putting them through a traumatic medical event because they're receiving bad advice long past the term of when the general consensus is, is a very bad idea. So um, respectfully, don't try to bring Christianity into this, Anna. You may, we're going to support well, every mother and we're going to support are, every father. Uh, and, and listen, you may, never have had the, you may never have had the conversation with a doctor where there's a mixed diagnosis. I have, okay? So it's not about getting bad advice. It's that sometimes you don't know things until after 11 weeks, after 12 weeks, after 16 weeks, things happen during a pregnancy. And I suggest you go read up on some of the horrible cases that we have heard about. Go read up on the woman from Florida whose baby, who was told in the second trimester that her baby did not have kidneys and was going to die and had to give birth to that baby and hold it for 90 minutes as it gasped for breath in her arms and watch that baby die. And then go talk to me. Anna and, and, Ka and Katie, we've got to leave it there. I appreciate you both being here. Look, this is an issue that is going to be a big one going into the fall and for, for so many Americans, and we uh, appreciate uh, your debate there. We're going to leave it. I appreciate both of you. We'll be right back.